grade 5 math number 10.7 elapsed time. We can solve elapsed time problems by converting units of time. By now you should know your measures of units of time that 60 seconds is a minute, 60 minutes is an hour, 12 hours will change you from a.m. to p.m. which is morning to evening, 24 hours is one day, 7 days is a week, 52 weeks is one year, 12 months is a year, and 365 days is a year. So let's convert some. Bob was proud of himself because he quit smoking. He made a point to tell everyone he met that he hadn't smoked in 243 days. How many weeks has it been since he quit smoking? So think, we need to convert the days into weeks. If there's seven days in one week, we need to divide the 243 days by seven days, and that'll tell us the weeks. We do long division. Seven goes into 243 how many times? Well, seven can't fit into two, but it can fit into 24 three times. So we put the three above the four. Seven times three is 21. We do our subtraction. Four minus one is three. And now it's this three's turn to come down. Seven goes into 33 four times because seven times four is 28. We do our subtraction and get five and that's how many days are left over. So we have 34 weeks and five days since he quit smoking. Good for you, Bob. Emma drove five hours and 20 minutes to her vacation cabin. If she left home at 10.15 a.m., what time did she arrive at the cabin? So here's the clock. That's 10.15 a.m. when she left, and we know she drove for five hours and 20 minutes. So we're going to count the hour hand forward five hours, and then we're going to count the minute hand forward 20 minutes because that's the amount of time she drove. So we're going to start with the time she left with the clock drawn that way, and we're going to count the five hours. Here's the hour hand, and it was 10.15, so the hour hand's on the 10. So we're going to go five hours, one, two, three, four, five. So now we know the hour hand's new place is pointing to the three, and we need to count the 20 minutes for the minute hand. Well, the minute hand was on the three, and we know in between each number is five minutes, so we're going to go 5, 10, 15, 20. That puts the minute hand on the 7. We draw that there and we see that it's 335. So we know she arrived at the cabin at 335. Wasn't that easy? All right, here's a tougher one. Tala saw two movies at the theater. One movie was two hours and five minutes long. The other was one hour and 45 minutes long. There was a 15 minute wait between the two movies. If the second movie ended at 1 a.m., what time did the first movie start? So we think. We need to add up all the elapsed time and then subtract it from 1 a.m. We need to add the first movie of 2 hours and 5 minutes, the second movie of an hour and 45 minutes, and we need to add the 15-minute wait time between the two movies. We add them all together. We add the minutes first, 5 minutes and 45 minutes and 50 minutes, we get the three fives is 15. We carry the one to put the five down and four, five, six. So we have 65 minutes. And then on this side, we have three hours. Well, we need to regroup this 65 minutes because there's only 60 in an hour. So we take 60 away from the minutes and we give it to the hours. That gives us four hours and five minutes. So now all we need to do is take away four hours and five minutes from 1 a.m. Well, we set our clock at 1 a.m. and we count back four hours. One, two, three, four. So now the hour hand is pointing to the nine. Okay, we're at 9 p.m. because it was 1 a.m. straight up on the 12 when it ended. But we still need to take away five minutes from 9 p.m. And we know going back from right at the 12 o'clock to the 11 is five minutes and that that's 60 minutes. So that's going to put us at 55. 8.55 p.m. See? Now, I want to let you know this. If a time and clock problem is ever way too hard to figure out, make a table of 24 hours. Don't make a clock. Make a table of 24 hours to solve it and count forward or backward as you need. You can make the table by hours or by five minute increments or by hours and minutes or half hours. If we needed to figure out from 7 p.m. to go back 10 hours, 
what we could do is just make a chart and we could draw a line where it changes from p.m. to a.m. We start at 7 p.m. and we count back 10. And we see that we get to 9 a.m. because it crosses over the line. So see, sometimes a chart can help you instead of a round clock, all right? And if we needed to do it in increments of five, then what we could do is find the hours and then separately find the minutes, or we could have made a table that each one of these was 15 minutes instead of an hour, see? Or five minutes, whatever the increment is that you need, okay? So don't always think that you have to use a round clock to answer your clock problem. Sometimes a table is a better help, okay? So that's elapsed time, and I'll see you next video. Bye.